I've asked Sarah this morning if she'd like to share with us in some special music, and she has agreed, and I'm going to ask her to come and do that now. She doesn't have any sunglasses. She's not cool this morning. No, you don't have to put them on. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> I mean, Love I you. am your kid. Yeah. Well, it's been a joy to be back home for a couple of days. Troy is sorry that he wasn't able to join us this trip, but with limited vacation time, it's, we have to sort of save those special times and trips. I thought I would share with you this morning one of my favorites, and I know it's one of Sue's favorites also. Where did she just flit off to? Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, Redeemer. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean you can only come this far?
Thank you, baby. Good thing to wear glasses after that. Dark ones. There was one other thing that I was going to mention to you. I am so thrilled. On Thursday of this past week, April 23rd, I celebrated my 11th anniversary of being your pastor. We have begun year number 12. Thank you. It is a true privilege and an honor to serve the Lord and especially to serve with you here at Bowmansdale. I still believe that our best days are ahead of us. And I want to work alongside you and with you to accomplish God's will for our lives individually and for our life corporately together. If you have your Bible today, turn to Psalm 23. A very familiar psalm, perhaps the most familiar passage of Scripture in all of our Bible. There is one verse that's probably more familiar in the world, and that would be John 3.16. But of all the passages uh, in our Bible, perhaps Psalm 23 is the most familiar passage of Scripture to us. It is a psalm of David. It is a psalm of comfort. And it follows immediately a psalm of distress. And it seems so appropriate to me that when we've had distress, God provides comfort. Psalm 22 begins, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Then turn with me, please, back to the Gospel of John, chapter 10, and beginning our reading with verse 11. John, chapter 10, and reading from verse 11 through verse 18. I heard him cough, so I know he's still awake. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for them also. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. May God's blessing be added to the reading and the hearing of his word. Almost every day we hear something in the news about ISIS. Our world is getting worse and worse, just as Jesus told us it would. In the latter days, he said, there will be war and rumors of war. ISIS is the radical form of the Muslim faith that wants to terrorize the world and literally take over the world. It wants to 
bring death and destruction to Christians, to Jews, and really to anybody who does not agree with that, even to other Muslims who aren't as radicalized as what they are. We live in perilous times. David writes words of comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack Jesus speaks in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Not like the hired man that he talks about there, who has charge over the flock. And when the wolf attacks, he abandons the flock. Every shepherd for himself. Every hired man for himself. And let the lambs fall where they may. Earlier this year, there was a movie that came out. I don't go see many movies. And I debated for a while as to whether I wanted to go see this one or not. The movie was entitled The American Sniper. I didn't want to, want to go and take B to see a movie that was all blood and gore. And I'm not up here to endorse that movie today. Please understand that. This movie has enough of that in, but it wasn't as bad as what I thought it could be. And the language was very colorful. But there was an aspect of that movie that spoke to me. And it spoke to this passage of Scripture. In that movie... The sniper is the younger brother. He is a husky kid. I, I appreciated that. Having grown up to be the husky kid, having all, we, all of my life been the husky kid, he was the husky kid. His older brother, about a year older, I'm assuming, was thin. One of the scenes in the movie showed the family in church together, reading God's word together. The next scene in the movie shows them in their family, sitting at their family table. And both brothers have black eyes. They've been in a fight. And dad said, tell me what happened. And the younger brother, who becomes the sniper, says to his dad, some bullies at school were picking on my brother. And I came to his defense. And his dad said, did you finish it? And he said, yes, I did. I took care of it. And his dad looked at him and said, I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of both of you. He said, I, I want to raise my sons to be this way. There are three kinds of people in this world. There are sheep. There are wolves. And there are sheepdogs. Now a sheep is defenseless. They go on through life and live in this world and sometimes they have an easy life and sometimes they fall prey to the wolf. And the wolf is the kind of person that just goes out and preys on the poor and the helpless and the defenseless. And I don't want my boys to be sheep and I don't want my boys to be wolves. What I want is my boys to be sheepdogs. Who aren't necessarily aggressive. Unless they have to be. But what they do is defend their family. And keep them from harm. 
if I could have bought the movie and shown you that clip today, I would have done it. The movie's not yet been released, but it will be soon. That's what Jesus is talking about. In our Christian lives and faith, God calls us to be shepherds of the flock. And that's my primary responsibility as your pastor, is to shepherd this flock and to watch out for you. I don't want to be overly aggressive. I don't want to be a wolf. The problem with ISIS is that they're wolves. They're attacking and killing off people randomly, indiscriminately. in the name of their faith. I don't want the Christian church to be like ISIS. I don't want us to relive the Crusades and killing people just because they are different than us. But I want us to be shepherds in our faith. Caring for our families, caring for our flock. Aggressive when we need to be, when we're forced to be. Defensive of the weak and the protect. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. There have been a few times in my life and ministry where I've been faced with laying down my life for the sheep. And I've stood it. I've been shot. I've been shot at. I've had a gun pulled on me on a number of occasions. Annie doesn't want to hear this. Her husband's just been licensed to be a pastor. I pray to God it never happens again. But it could. And I pray to God that if it happens again, that I'm strong enough to stand and do what I need to do in defense of my sheep. I don't want to be the hired man who runs away when there's a threat. I don't want to be overly aggressive. I don't want to be a wolf. I want to be a shepherd. I've gone through handgun training. And I carry. I don't carry when I come to church. I don't carry very often. And here's my theory on carrying a gun. If you want my car, I'll give you the keys. You want my money, I'll empty my pockets. You want any possessions I have, they're yours. You threaten my family, my family, You're mine. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I lay down my life for the sheep. When B and I were first married and on our honeymoon, we were sitting one morning and she, I didn't have a shirt on. She looked at my back and she said, what is this? And I said, a scar. And she said, what's this and 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 this? And I said, they're all scars. She said, what from? When I was shot. She said, how did you get shot? I said, protecting a family in the church.
shot in the back with a 12-gauge shotgun. I'm thankful to be alive. And what I were, was protecting was two children, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, from their stepfather's shotgun. I'm not looking for credit here this morning. Please understand that. What I want you to know is that our job in our families and in our church is becoming more critical as the days go on. To be shepherds. Or as the sniper's dad said, to be sheepdogs for our families. In the month of March, in Franklin County, which is where B and I live now, in the month of March in Franklin County, a security firm held off, this is a computer security firm, held off 60 threats from ISIS in Franklin County. 60 computer security threats. I, that's the only county I know the statistics for. I'm assuming it's at least that same number, if not more, for Cumberland County, for Dolphin County, for every other county. We have a job to do. Protecting the innocent. Sharing Jesus Christ. We can't be another ISIS. That's not what Jesus ever calls us to do. What he calls us to do is to be shepherds using his pattern. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And then he says, I have other sheep. Now what does that mean for us? There are lots of lambs out in our society who need to know Jesus as their Savior. And how does that happen? When us as shepherds go out and share good news of Jesus. Is that a risk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the 1950s and 60s when people were knocking on people's doors and carrying a tract from their local church, that was pretty innocent. I'm, I'm here to tell you today about Jesus. I'd like to give you this gospel tract, and I'd like to invite you to my church. No one thought a thing about that. If we're sharing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ today, there is a risk in that. But here's the greatest risk, not for violence, but for being considered dead to our neighbor, to our friend. Oh, they, they will still say hello to us. They'll still wave at us from a distance. But they won't want a relationship, perhaps, with us. But guess what? If you and I don't do the job to which God has called us in sharing our faith in the lives of others, and our neighbor or across the street or beside us or a friend or a family member or a co-worker dies without Jesus, guess what happens? They spend eternity in hell. We need to be good shepherds. 
Jesus uses the parable of the, of the sheep and the shepherd when he talks about the lost sheep and the 99 that are kept in the fold and the shepherd goes in search of the one that is lost. Guess what? There are a lot of ones who are lost. Most of the threat against us is probably not going to happen with a gun, and I pray that it doesn't happen with a gun. But most of the threat against us is going to happen in insidious ways, where people are going to be attacking our computer systems, or where people are going to be influencing our society to make acceptable things that are detestable to God. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now notice the next part of that passage of scripture. Jesus said, I willingly lay it down. No one takes Jesus' life. He lays it down willingly. Why? For the sheep. For the men here who have families today, you have prime responsibility for being the shepherd of your family. If you're a woman here today, you also have shepherding responsibilities for your family. What is out there for your family today? My home as a child, We prayed together. We read scripture together. Mom read to us out of the children's Bible every morning. Dad read to us from the Bible and prayed with us every evening. Why? To build that protection right around us. To be shepherd over our family. There are three kinds of people in our society. Lambs, wolves, and shepherds. God is calling us to be the shepherds over our families, to protect our own flock, to reach out to other lambs, who are lost, to bring them in, to share Jesus Christ in a critical world today. This is serious work. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you this day that Jesus Christ has come to lay down his life No one takes it from him. He lays it down for us. He is gentle to us. He carries us in his arms. He loves us. Gives us everything that we need. Lord, help us to lead our families and our society back to you. In Jesus we pray. Amen.